We've all heard of metrics, both in the context of business and in our personal lives. But why do metrics matter? Hi, I'm Sean Thompson, and today I'm going to teach you what metrics are and why they can be incredibly useful in both business and in life. So what is a metric? Well, first let's start with a definition. A metric is simply a numerical measurement of something. That could be on a single data point or a set of data over a period of time. Metrics are quantitative rather than qualitative, meaning that they are numerical. So why does that matter? Well, that makes metrics objective rather than subjective, which we'll get to in a little bit more detail later. So what are some examples of a few common metrics that we see in everyday life? Well, any owner of a car is familiar with the metric of miles per gallon. Miles per gallon simply measures the number of miles a car can travel on a single gallon of gasoline. That's what makes miles per gallon a standard measurement of fuel efficiency. In the business world, a common metric that measures financial performance is net profit margin. Net profit margin is simply the amount of money that is left over after all of the expenses of the business is paid. It's what belongs to the shareholders or owners of the business. So as you can see, metrics can be pretty wide ranging from the context in the business world also to our everyday lives but they all share the common attribute of being numerical. So why do metrics matter? Well, metrics are very useful in providing context. By context, I mean that metrics give you insight into the way something is performing, but on a relative or comparative basis. For example, if your car gets 25 miles per gallon and your friend's truck gets 10 miles per gallon, you can quickly assess the performance and fuel efficiency of your car compared to their truck and realize that your car is much more fuel efficient than their truck. You use the metric of miles per gallon in the context of all vehicles and were quickly able to assess fuel efficiency and relative performance. Let's look at another example, but this time from the business world. Let's say that Joe owns a machine shop and Joe's machine shop earns a net profit margin of 15%. Joe now has a benchmark or metric of 15% that he can now go and use to assess his company's performance relative to other machine shops. Let's say on average, all else being equal, that other machine shops earn a net profit margin of 18%. So Joe can take his 15% net profit margin and compare that to the 18% net profit margin of other like machine shops and see that he's got a little bit of room to improve there on his net profit margin. Joe now has an objective, clear assessment of how his business is performing to other machine shops, all else being equal. Now notice I said all else being equal a few times there. It is critical that when you're using metrics to assess comparative performance, that you make sure that you're doing it on an apples to apples basis. So going back to my miles per gallon example, I compared a car to a truck. That is not apples to apples. What I should have done is compared your car, which gets 25 miles per gallon, to another car that is very similar and compared that to actually assess whether your car was more fuel efficient. The same goes for any analysis, whether it's on your own business or if you're analyzing another business. Make sure that when you analyze metrics that you're doing it on a comparative basis that is apples to apples. One simple mistake I see business owners and employees make is when they're trying to compare the month over month performance of a specific measurement. The typical comment will go something like this. Well, March was a great month because revenue was up X percent from February. Hmm, hold on. What's wrong with that statement? Well, it may be true that revenue was up in March over February on an absolute dollar term, but that is not an apples to apples comparison because since the inception of the calendar, we all know that March has had more days than February in it. So by default, it's likely that the revenue increase in March was solely due to those additional days in the month. So how do we solve for this and actually assess relative performance? Well, one way we could do that is by using a normalized metric. So if we take our total revenue for each of those respective months and divide it by the number of days in the month, or better yet, working days in the month, 
what we come up with is a normalized metric of revenue per day. So we can simply take that normalized metric of revenue per day and objectively assess whether March did have higher revenue on a revenue per day basis. We now have an apples to apples way of comparing performance. So what have we learned? Well, we've learned that metrics are a numerical measurement of something that can be used to assess relative performance if done so in the right context. So next time when you're analyzing how well something performed, keep this lesson in mind. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. And if you're interested in more videos like this one that cover business and analytics, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.